Hello, and thank you for joining us today. Um, you heard when you joined the meeting that you're in listen-only mode. Our presentation is about 35 minutes, and we will turn off our webcams while we're giving the presentation so you could see the slides better. At the end, we'll return to the screen to answer any questions you may have. If you do have a question at that time, I ask that you use the raise your hand function. It's a little hand icon on your screen. And then I could unmute you and you could speak to ask your question. If you would prefer, you can also type in your question and send it using the question tool. I'll read your questions out loud after the presentation. Um, so you have that option to wait and raise your hand to speak or to type in your question and send it to us. And now I'm gonna turn things over to our executive director, Gail Mountcastle, to begin and give introductions. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, welcome everybody, uh, good afternoon, and thank you so much for taking some of your time to listen to us uh, discuss the Oakton Park and Facility Plan for the Park District. Before we start, I'm gonna go through um, the introductions of the people that you see on the screen. My name is Gail Mountcastle, as Margaret mentioned, I'm the Executive Director of the Park District. Uh, we have April Armour, who is our Superintendent of Recreation. We have Terry Wolf, who is Superintendent of Buildings and Grounds. Sandra DeAngelis, who is the Superintendent of Finance. Margaret Holler, Director of Marketing and Public Relations. Jennifer Minier, she's our Project Manager. Marianne Lucars is the Executive Administrative Assistant. Brent Dolan is our Oakton Facilities Manager. Jordan Mann is not with us today, but he is also on our team. He's the Oakton Facility and Hockey Supervisor. Julie Grieve is our Recreation Program Manager, and Jim Dehue is our Athletic Supervisor. So the purpose of the meeting today is, like I said, to share the um, Oakton Park and Facility Master Plan, how we got here, answer questions, and gain feedback when considering next steps. So the next few slides I'm gonna go through just briefly, um, you know, to talk about a little bit of background on the park district. Here on this slide, you see the uh, service area of the Park Ridge Park District. We are a separate entity than the city of Park Ridge and we are governed by a seven member board of commissioners who are elected. Our boundaries are nearly coterminous, but very slightly from the city of Park Ridge boundaries. This slide just shows a, uh, a snapshot of our parks and our current facilities, which you can see we have 137.9 acres of land and several facilities and parks. Here are numbers of individuals that we serve. And in, as you can note on the slide, in 2019, we had over 400,000 registrants and visitors to our facilities. This is not counting those that visit our parks. And this number continues to grow annually. We have a wide range of recreation facilities that serve our residents and non-resident participants. Even during the pandemic, we were able to serve over 177,000 patrons in our programs and daily visitors at our, our facilities. Park Ridge is very active and our parks facilities and programs are heavily utilized. So why are we addressing Oakton at this time? The district completed a comprehensive master plan in 2013. This gave us an overall look at the condition of our major facilities and all of our parks and provided recommendations for the future. Our top recommendation from the master plan was to take care of our existing facilities. So at that time, we evaluated the facilities and prioritized these by the highest need for attention. All of our major facilities, except for Centennial Fitness Center, were aging and over 50 years old. So we started with the Centennial Pool uh, renovation and that was completed in 2014. In pro at um, 2016, Prospect Park um, was not a part of the park district, but the voters passed a referendum in 2013 pres to preserve this open space, which we did in 2016. We improved uh, the interior of Main Park in 2017. All of these projects were completed within budget. 
So Oakton is now up. Uh, this is a 16.5 acre park. It is our largest park and it has some of our major recreation facilities located at this site. So the goal of this project is to preserve and enhance the existing ice rink facility that has been a gem in the park district and community over the past 52 years. It is also to provide new amenities needed in our community while having them be financially sustainable over the long run. So over the past four years, the district has worked together with consultants, staff, board, and the community to develop the recommended Oakton Master Plan. We undertook a detailed and rigorous process to get to this point, which I will highlight in the next slides. The current plan was recommended by Park District staff and the board in spring of 2019 as the best option to fulfill the needs of the Park District while being financially sustainable over the long term. At that point, we put the plan in the hands of a 33 person citizen task force to vet the plan over a series of meetings that outlined our process. And upon evaluation, they recommended we share and test the plan with the community, which is why we are here today. I should also mention that since our process was stalled by the pandemic in 2020, right when we were starting the public engagement process, a new park district board was seated with three new members and they will have the final say, as well as the other four board members on the next steps for the project. And of course, if we go to referendum, the final say will be with you, the voters. So this slide is just uh, to get you orientated with our current site. North On the northwest side of Park Ridge, Oakton Park sits. It's north of Oakton Street, south of Bessie Highway, and to the west is Algonquin, um, which turns into Riverside Drive to the south. So a quick overview of what we have on the site, uh, the, the existing driving range. We have a grove of uh, beautiful oak trees. We have uh, the entry and the parking to the existing ice rink, green space in the front of the site, a dog park. We currently host the, the city's salt dome to the north of the parking lot, and then batting cages exist right next to that. <clears throat> so going back to the comprehensive district master plan completed in 2013, um, highlighted here is the major findings, uh, the key findings of that 2013 comprehensive master plan. As you can see, we have 88 issues throughout the facility. Ventilation improvements are needed. Mechanical systems are beyond the, their life expectancy. There are flat roof areas, and these are not designed for proper water flow, so the roof is leaking. Uh, safety standards are not compliant for egress and railings. So in 2017, the district contracted with White Architects to further master plan Oakton Park and facilities. This is a more in-depth look at the park and facility than the 2013 district-wide plan. So the first step in the process was a facility inventory and analysis to determine existing conditions. On this slide, we're showing you some of the larger issues um, that occur. The stairs that lead to the second floor, which houses the locker rooms, um, is not compliant with ADA and it also um, is a safety hazard. As you can see, um, this is a common occurrence when the skaters have to walk up and down these stairs uh, in their skates. The front awning of the um, entryway was removed last year because it was deteriorating and leaking and posing a possible safety risk. Other areas of the roof, have, as I said, have also had issues with leaking. In the downstairs locker rooms, um, these were situated for the outdoor pool that is no longer there. And it currently does not meet the needs of the skaters. It was a makeshift um, locker room area that connects to the hallway. There's also a step up to the offices and registration areas in the lobby, which are not accessible. And as you can see from this picture, it's a small description of that the parking lot is beyond repair and in need of replacement. So moving on to the ice mechanicals um, 
So this section of the facility analysis was conducted by Stevens, who specialized, another consultant who specialized in this area. The ice mechanical system is 24 years old and is nearing the end of its, life to, of its expected life. The R22 Freon refrigerant is no longer being produced. The current mechanicals, in addition to being at the end of their useful life, cannot accommodate the new refrigerant. In addition, the rink floor and dashboard system is nearing its life expectancy. Another step in our evaluation process was to complete a statistically valid needs assessment survey in 2018 to determine the top priorities of our residents, both specifically at Oakton and throughout the district. One of the 2018 district-wide survey questions, which you see on the screen, asked residents what they were willing to funding, fund with tax dollars. An indoor multi-sport athletic facility was the most supported at 23%. We went more specific and asked about support with tax dollars at Oakton Park. Outdoor walking trail was the highest ranked amenity with 24% and the multi-sports complex was next with 23%. In September, 2018, we also worked with Pros Consulting to develop a market analysis. The purpose of the market analysis was to determine the viability of providing the top amenities identified in the needs assessment and identified the amenities that are already adequately provided in the private sector. The analysis identified the seven key recommendations here, which you can see on the screen were to renovate and update the main ice surface, enhance the support facilities, multi-purpose sport opportunities, enhance the parking, add an additional sheet of ice, indoor walking and running track, and maintain the adequate level of maintenance for dog park batting cages and driving range. So based on all of this information collected during the input phase from the facility analysis, stakeholder meetings, community public meetings, the needs assessment survey, and the market analysis, the following amenities were identified for consideration in the concept plans that you see here on the screen. So with this information, eight different concept plans were developed that tested different combinations of top requested amenities, such as the indoor playground, gymnasium, turf dome versus brick and mortar indoor turf facility, a second full sheet of ice, a studio rink, and more. Performance for the concepts that were deemed feasible were developed to evaluate the financial viability of each plan. A pro forma consists of a detailed financial analysis of operations, including projected usage, fees to be charged, and all operational estimated costs. We were not only making sure that the plan produced a positive annual net revenue, but we also wanted to make sure that the anticipated revenue is able to cover its future capital needs over the next 25 plus years. So of all of these plans um, that are listed above, um, C1, which is in the bottom right-hand corner, was chosen, and some of the reasons that the other plans didn't work include the following. And just a note, I will be going through, um, so you're not squinting your eyes to see the C1 on this slide. Um, we will be showing it on the next slides and discuss it in detail. But some of the reasons that the other plans didn't work were renovating the current facility is an option. Um, but without adding the studio rink, it does not provide the needed additional ice to be commensurate with neighboring facilities in order to keep the ice program relevant. And that was option A, which is in the left-hand corner. Three of these plans had an air dome turf facility as an option. After researching and visiting domes in the area, it was determined this was not an ideal facility. The main reasons included the probability of having to replace the air dome at some point due to weather damage, the operational costs and labor to maintain um, is very high. It is not an ideal environment in the facility from our estimation with the sound temperatures um, and for other reasons. The option that added a second full size rink was over our bonding capacity limit and eliminated the driving range. And the option with the gymnasium did not generate the type of operational net revenues needed to sustain the financial viability. So as I said, of the eight concepts, C1 was recommended by staff and at the time approved by the board. 
and it's attempted to accomplish a positive annual net revenue and pay for its future capital over the next 25 years. So we are thrilled to be showing this plan to the community. This is the uh, current Oakton plan, master plan that is proposed. This plan is felt to be, as I said, the best option to fulfill the needs of the district while being financially sustainable over the long term. The major components are as follows. The renovation of the existing ice facility, the addition of a studio ice rink, a new indoor turf facility, which is a very versatile facility, new support facilities, which include the lobby, ADA restrooms, and multi-purpose space. We would be replacing the netting poles at the driving range to accomplish, um, well, first of all, they're at the end of their useful life and to accomplish a higher netting to accommodate more park use um, for the general public and for the dog park. So summarized on the slide are also all of the um, key reasons why, and they, they repeat um, some of the items that I've stated on the slides uh, before, but they, um, this, these are the major uh, factors of how we ended up with C1 as our proposed plan. So at this time, I'd like to turn it over to our superintendent of buildings and grounds, Terry Wolf, to review the outdoor spaces of the proposed plan and how we envision the spaces to be utilized. Thank you, Gail. As you can see on this slide, we will be creating a passive um, uh, space to gather uh, outdoors and, and encourage general park use uh, at this site, which is not really being done at this time. Uh, this passive gathering space will have some kind of a shelter and or seating, uh, which both rank very highly on our survey results. Additionally, the loop walking path of a half a mile was the number one supported amenity that was identified by survey respondents as something they'd be willing to spend their money on at Oakton. In an effort to maximize the investment being made here, this walking path will serve the dual purpose of providing both emergency vehicle access to portions of the facility, as well as as a walking path. As previously mentioned, when looking at the overall site and landscape plan, we felt very strongly that we needed to, to protect and respect as many of the mature trees as possible on this site. The main tree grove will remain and additional trees and native plantings will enhance the site and improve stormwater infiltration. And speaking of stormwater, with a facility this size does come a large parking lot and it triggers the need for us to manage the stormwater on our property. This plan includes a combination of asphalt and permeable paver parking lot to manage the stormwater. The stormwater will flow through the pavers and be stored under the parking lot and slowly released into the sewer system. This will be an improvement over what exists today that will reduce the stress on the sewer system in the neighborhood. These 300 new parking spaces will also be a great improvement over the current pothole riddled asphalt parking lot of 163 spaces and have the side benefit of helping ease stormwater concerns. There are currently approximately 299 trees uh, at Oakton. We estimate uh, 251 of them will be preserved. But of the 48 mature trees that are being removed, 16 are already identified as in poor health. As you can see, the design concept on the exterior of the facility looks to introduce wood tones and textures to the exterior to enhance its presence in the community and warm and soften the edges of the cold steel building. Here you can see some street level views of the concept plan that you can view from approximately the location of the tree grove where we'll have some passive green gathering space as well as from the parking lot. You can see how the varied tones enhances the look and no longer looks as industrial as it does now. The center portion of the building, where it says Oakton Sports Complex, is the existing ice rink. The studio rink is the offset portion to the right on the top picture, 
and in the foreground on the lower picture. Finally, the new indoor turf space is to the left of the existing rink, just beyond the new lobby and entrance area. In this enhanced concept rendering of the main entrance, the existing ice rink structure is the portion just to the right again that says Oakton on it. The turf is to the left, and as you can see, we have a canopy that will extend out from the building to provide shelter for those who are waiting to be picked up or to assist those that have just been dropped off to enter the building clear of the weather. At this time, I would like to turn it over to our Superintendent of Recreation, April Armour, who's going to highlight the interior spaces and the programming opportunities that they will offer with this great new facility. Thank you, Terry. As I already mentioned, staff prepared performers of the projected annual revenue and expense to analyze the usage and financial sustainability of the facilities. We also used fee comparisons from similar facilities in the surrounding areas to ensure that we would remain competitive in the market. The chart on this slide shows an operations budget for one year, and we have separated by existing and new amenities. As you can see, the indoor turf is anticipated to bring in a significant amount of revenue and will greatly assist in supporting the overall facilities on the property. Now, what will we do with this space? If you've ever taken programs with us, you know that we have a wonderful team of recreation professionals that were extremely excited about the additional space and the opportunities that this could bring. Um, we, an, we would anticipate the focus of this facility is to serve the community, not to be a regional facility. So the next few slides will show more detailed information about the indoor spaces and show just a snapshot of how we could potentially use the facility. This shows the overview of the facility with the existing ice rink remaining in its current location, the addition of the studio rink at the front of the facility, new lobby entrances, office, offices, concessions, and everything on one level, and the turf field towards the back of the property. Next, we'll move on to um, the lobby area which is a new vestibule with an open lobby and welcoming reception area combined with skate rentals as you enter. Um, if you've visited the facility in the past 50 plus years, you know that all of these um, areas are currently separated, which makes it very difficult. And um, the office, some offices are on the second floor. And you'll see the, um, we anticipate glass viewing areas both into the ice rinks as well as the turf area and a concession area, restrooms. Um, again, as you know, those are much needed um, improvement and two multi-purpose rooms, which we'll zoom in on the slide. The two multi-purpose rooms will be available for rentals, parties, and classes. Each room is about 1,800 square feet, and they can be rented by anyone in the community and will also feature an outdoor patio space with a fireplace, as something similar into the, this, the photo here. The lobby will also include a practice area for off-ice skaters. So this shows the two rink overview. The existing ice rink will remain as a regulation sized rink and the addition of the 60 by 90 studio rink. The, the current limitations of the ice arena have resulted in an inability to adequately serve the needs of the current participants. Based on the survey, the market analysis and what we've personally experienced within our programs, the studio rink and facility improvements are crucial to the future success of the ice arena and would dramatically improve the availability of the ice time on the main existing rink. There's a high local and regional demand for ice and our residents are currently traveling to neighboring ice facilities to rent ice time. Without the opportunity to offer more and better opportunities based on local market demand, we will and we have and will continue to lose customers. Another factor which pushes customers to other facilities is that we're at a major disadvantage with our youth hockey program and have fallen 
decline in the market due to a shortage of ice. As a result, we're not able to offer a house hockey league for all age levels. And again, some of our residents have preferred to go elsewhere. So the studio rink would allow us to expand our older age levels. So focusing on the main rink, you'll see that there's an addition of team rooms, storage, and a training gym, as well as new bleachers. We highlight here the expanded programming and vision in the main rink based on the addition of the studio rink, including the mentioned house hockey league, competitive edge figure skating, learn to play hockey, and um, learn to skate. We can also expand our ice rentals to our current affiliates, our figure skating club, as well as main hockey. Here we see a snapshot of the new opportunities the studio rink would provide in addition to the expanded programming at the main rink. There's also a viewing area for the rink and a family restroom just at the start of the hallway to the main rink. This allows for moving many of the current smaller classes to open up the main rink for additional programs and rentals. We envision this as a wonderful place for birthday party rentals, either just the studio rink or the studio rink and add on one of the multi-purpose rooms. Hockey clinics, stick, stick and puck, um, a broom ball league, three on three hockey, as well as private lessons. And again, this all opens up the main rink um, for additional classes and rentals. Now moving on to the proposed indoor turf usage. This space is 60 by 60 yards with storage along the back and bleacher seating, as well as an indoor batting tunnel. We envision many opportunities for expanding current, including current programs, including relocating some sports classes for Main Park and the Centennial Fitness Center, lacrosse practice and trainings, youth indoor soccer league, and a men's soccer league. And new opportunities may include expanded sports programming for ages seven to 14, sports specific training, winter lacrosse league, field hockey, seven on seven adult football, women's soccer league, drop in play times with bounce houses during the day when other programs aren't going on. And then there's also indoor walking around the perimeter um, when there's not rentals and you know excessive programming. Additionally, the turf can be divided into more, four smaller fields for multiple rentals, classes, or practices simultaneously. There's also opportunities for rentals for our current affiliate groups, as well as for other community and individual groups at the proposed um, turf field. So our affiliates can use it as a practice location for soccer, baseball, and softball, a training location for football, a potential game location for peewee soccer, birthday parties, again, just using the space or adding on the multi-purpose rooms, athletic practices, and some adult groups as well. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Sandra DeAngelis, our Superintendent of Finance. Thank you, April. So I'm going to explain uh, the district's funding sources and constraints and go over some of the financial highlights which demonstrate the Park District's fiscal stability. So our, our operations are funded by a combination of user fees and charges and property tax. So this dollar bill depicts how your property taxes are distributed. You can see that a large percentage of your property taxes go to fund uh, the elementary and high school districts, while the park district gets a little under 5% of your property taxes. Again, the Park District relies on a diversity of revenues to fund its various operations and community offerings. And our 2021 budgeted expenses totaled almost $19 million. The district's outstanding debt is rated AA plus with a stable outlook by Standard & Poor's. That indicates that that credit rating agency sees the district's capacity to meet its financial commitments as very strong. Also, the district consistently achieves the Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. 
This demonstrates that our annual financial reports provide full disclosure and clearly communicate the district's financial position. So in order to maintain the district's assets and plan for necessary capital replacements and improvements, we track the average useful life and expected asset replacement schedule with the capital asset replacement program. This projects the expected future annual capital costs of these expenses. For example, a playground typically has a useful life of roughly 20 years. When a new playground is installed, we use an inflationary estimate to project the replacement costs of that playground 20 years in the future. So we know that we have to plan for that expense. Other examples of the items planned for include vehicles, HVAC and mechanical systems, roofs, parking lots, and technology. The largest funding sources for the capital fund are bonds, transfers from the operating fund, and grants. Sometimes the needs of aging facilities exceeds the available funding, and the funding for major improvement projects go beyond the limits of the above sources. Funding mechanisms for large capital renovation projects or new facilities in our budget is a challenge and typically has to go to referendum um, for use of referendum bonds that would call for a tax increase. As April described earlier how financial projections called pro formas were completed for each of the H eight plans considered for the Oakton site. This plan produces an, uh, an estimate of 470,000 of operating surplus annually, and that covers the estimated large future capital needs at the site. The other plans considered by the district put the district in a deficit by year 25. So this chart on the right uh, shows the statistics for a median home value in Park Ridge and the estimated impact of a referendum issue of this size. So the estimated monthly impact to the average homeowner would be about $9 per month. So now I'll turn it back over to Gail to summarize uh, the Oakton Master Plan. Thank you, Sandra, and thank you um, to April and Terry for um, explaining the different parts of the presentation. So as you can see, here's a recap of the master plan. The concept is supported by the Community Needs Assessment, Market Analysis, and Citizen Task Force. Current and potential programming participation support the need for the proposed facility. The pro forma of this option shows positive annual net revenue and covers anticipated capital assessment or asset replacement costs. It maximizes the tree preservation and maintains the main tree grove, and it protects and improves the existing driving range. It also allows for the relocation of the dog park to allow for facility and parking improvements and improves stormwater management. So what is next? Um, as you can see on this slide, we've had three community information meetings, today being the third and final. We've had tours of Oakton Park to show the back end of the facility and the conditions. We are continuing with outreach, outreach presentations to community groups, which are also wrapping up. So the next very important step is to hear from you, the residents, with a community survey that will be conducted by mail and sent to your homes approximately October 18th and with a return date of November 23rd. The survey will be utilized by the board and the task force um, to further analyze this master plan. There'll also be a poll that's conducted by phone or and email on um, November 6th through 9th to a selected amount of residents. The results, as I said, will be presented to our 33 citizen person task force and they will analyze all of the additional information and then make a recommendation to our board of commissioners. If the board will adopts this as a ballot question, um, as we said, this is a referendum project. It would be for the June 28th, 2022 ballot. And so the board would need to make a decision by February 22nd. So at this time, 
um, we are happy to answer any questions that you may have of any um, of, the, of the staff present today. As I mentioned, if you do have a question, you could use the raise your hand function at the little hand button, and I will unmute you to speak. We do have a number of people in the audience, but so far I do not have anybody raising their hand. Okay, no questions? No questions. Wonderful. Hopefully that means that we've uh, explained everything about the project that you need to know. Um, we are all available by email or phone call if there are any questions that you think of after this presentation. So I just thank you so much for attending and spending um, your time with us today. Thank you.